And Judge Pitts, I'll start with you. What are the biggest problems you see develop, or what are some problems you see develop, uh, from a lawyer from lawyers' failure to communicate with one another? And what advice would you give to prevent these pitfalls? Thank you for that question. And and what I want to talk to the room about, which is, it was mentioned earlier, the people that are here aren't really the ones that need to hear the topic, but those that are not here are the ones that benefit from it. But to me, the greatest challenge that we have, if you're going to aspire to be ethical lawyers, is how do we practice ethically when the other side does not? And, and as judges, how, how do we keep our patience and our temper when the others are not? Because that's a higher standard, that's a higher burden, and same with the adjuster. How, how, do, how do I show dignity and courtesy to someone I really don't like? <laughs> and, 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 and it's not as infrequent as one would like to believe. And one of the things that the nicest part about the workers' comp profession to me is, is the good and the bad. Having done, come up in a defense firm with a large defense firm with, with a reputation of being hard chargers where if there was discovery to be produced, they would shuffle the records and, you know, things that, that really just were mean-spirited. But that was part of the, the if you sued my client, I'm not giving you any, any benefit of any courtesy or doubt. In other words, it, I'm personally offended that you have sued my client. And that was the environment that I was trained in and grew up in. And you get personal injury in MedMal, some of the other stuff, and it's, it's a broader community. So people don't see each other as much. And so they tend to be more litigious with each other. The, the beauty of comp and probably the appellate practitioners is it's a much smaller community. And we tend to see the same people over and over and, and over again. So that while I have the advantage on this case, I may not have the advantage on the next case. And, and therefore, it's a long-term 40 to 50 year proposition of, of, if you look down your career, you have to understand that what comes around goes around. Um, and so the courtesies that you extend uh, will ultimately come back to you. And, I, and the question I want to add to one thing, what's the biggest problem you see to develop from, from lawyers failure to communicate civilly with one another? Because when, when you get real animosity, personal animosity between the lawyers or between the clients, I, I know if you're an adjuster in here, there, there are some claimants you just really don't like. <laughs> and I've had adjusters tell me when I was practicing law, Neil, I'd rather pay you than the claimant. <laughs> and so I, I'm not going to settle. You're going to take this to trial. I'm, you're going to win, and I'm going to pay you. But I'm not paying the, your client. And so that breeds a lot of unnecessary expense and litigation. It just does. It, it tends to make the system look bad and break down. And so this, this stability aspect of, of really is designed, if you look back at civilization, you go back to the common law, you, you watch the way the barristers practice. It was designed for the security and the longevity of the legal system as a way of separating us from a lawless society. And, and so the, what we do is, is a continuation of a long line of lawyers that have, and judges that have been administering law. And you all know from very difficult, contentious cases, there are high feelings involved. There's real money involved. There are lawyers, there are lives involved. There's, so um, so I kind of given you a long answer to a simple, simple first question, but I really wanted to set the stage and what, what I think our challenge for this decade is to try to raise the level of civility in the practice, raise the way we practice, the way we, we communicate from the bench or from the adjuster's perspective, from the claimant lawyers, defense lawyers, with an idea that we serve a bigger master than just simply what our individual role is.
Thank you. <laughs> Judge Langham, any uh, any thoughts after that? Uh, I think uh, of professionalism, frankly, I, I think of geology. And that doesn't make a lot of sense, but uh, I think if you think of a, of a river flowing through those of us that are a community, there are some of us that are going to suffer erosion, and some of us might benefit from some accretion, the opposite. Uh, <laughs> I think if, if those of us in the room that maybe don't need to be in the room might keep that in mind and keep in mind that the corrosive uh, erosion factors are not present, uh, maybe with a little extra effort we can put forth the kind of uh, mentality or attitude that, um, that we can actually add to people's lives instead of depleting or deleting from their lives. Uh, if we put that extra into our profession, I think it'll be a better place, and I think everybody benefits. Okay, thank you. Judge Wolf, anything to add? You know, we have limited give and take between the attorneys by its very nature. Uh, so we don't see a lot of what you see at the trial level. We also may be people, when they see the three black robes in Article 5 judges, behave a little bit better, I don't know. But there is some, are some problems. Uh, I, you know, mentioned, uh, you know, people getting, uh, pointing fingers at each other and calling everybody liar, liar, house on fire, you know. It just doesn't get you very far. Appellate judges have a very, have to wait. I think somebody came up with that. We read 40,000 pages a year of stuff. Judges don't like to take up their time playing referees. They want to get to the issue. So if you're going to take up your time in a brief uh, doing crazy things, you know, and calling the other side uh, bad names, you're going to get the judge upset who's the person who wants to, you know, going to be deciding your case. And you're not going to gain a lot of points. But, you know, there are ways. Let me just, I talk to the uh, freshman law class at FSU every year on brief writing. And I say, it's not going to help you to say liar, liar to the other side. But there are effective ways if you need to do it. If you say, judges, so-and-so claims this happened. On page six of the record, if you look at it, though, this is what actually happened. Have you called that other side a liar? Well, maybe, but you've done it legitimately. And you've also built up your credibility with the court without any, you know, with, and on the other side. So you can do that in a civil manner, probably more effectively. So try to think that. Rather than getting into a name-calling fight, think about it. If somebody's doing something that affects your case, try to keep it factual rather than name-calling. And then, you know, treat people the way you want them to be treated, to treat you. Yeah, something I was reading in, in, in this literature about professionalism basically referenced the golden rule. So, yeah, go, we'll go back to kindergarten a little bit. Um.